Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new health care program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Wendy Kilaidlaw here from Heal Endometriosis Naturally. I hope that this podcast finds you well today. Something a little bit different this week. I thought you might want to hear my recent interview that I did with Dr. T.J. Woodham. You may remember that I interviewed him on my podcast and it was great to hear his uh, philosophy on how to heal the body naturally. But I thought you might also want to hear my interview with him where I go into a lot more detail into how I approach the whole body, whole person, holistic approach to healing endometriosis naturally. And just give you a bit more background information if you wish to take a further step and come and work with me. So enjoy. What's up Unleashed Humans? On today's episode, I have the privilege to interview Wendy Laidlaw, who has helped hundreds to thousands of women overcome endometriosis naturally. Ladies, listen up. If you have painful periods and have accepted them as normal, then this episode is 100% for you. Endometriosis can be a severely debilitating condition in women, and I'll explain what endometriosis is in just a second, because I first wanted to say that this episode isn't just for women alone. Guys, this episode is for you too. If your girlfriend, fiance, or wife is going through this painful condition, it also affects you as well. As the psychological battle these women deal with is extremely difficult because they experience mood swings, depression, anger, anxiety, and debilitating pain. Guys, this is something we will never truly know the feeling of. But if you know what these women are going through, you can start to understand the emotional and physical roller coaster these women are experiencing. For those who don't know what endometriosis is, it's a condition in women in which their uterine tissues grow and spread outside of the normal uterine area. This can lead to heavy bleeding, heavy cramping, severe pain, irregular cycles, and a severely limited quality of life. The pain we are talking about is equivalent to having appendicitis, which if you have had it before, you know it's brutally painful. Women who typically go the medical route for endometriosis see no real change because medical treatments don't attack the problem at hand, which is usually a dietary lifestyle and hormone issue that needs careful tending to. This is why Wendy Laidlaw is your go-to person for everything endometriosis related as she suffered for 30 years with endometriosis until she find the magic bullet. Now, the best part is that Wendy heals endometriosis without drugs, surgery, or any other invasive measure. She simply utilizes amazing and super easy nutrition protocols. She also helps women create healthy head spaces and cleans up their daily environment. If you know someone suffering with endometriosis, painful periods, irregular cycles, heavy bleeding, and cramping, please share this episode with someone you care for or for anyone that you even know. It will likely change their life forever. As I said earlier, this episode is not just for women, but it's for men too. Because when Wendy's women start this protocol, the whole family typically gets on board and the men of the families end up losing a lot of weight, get better sleep and feel better as well. So don't just think this is for women, it's for men too. Now, what's even better is that Wendy has a free book detailing her experiences and how to crush endometriosis naturally. Now, I will add a link to her free book in the show notes so you guys can click right on over to a website and get your free copy of Healing Endometriosis Naturally. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into the show. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Unleashed Human Podcast with your host, Dr. TJ Woodham. Now, the woman I have on the podcast today is making a massive 
change in women's health today. I am literally so pumped to have her on. We are just discussing how much that I've been waiting for her to be on this podcast because she is just crushing it. She's an expert on healing endometriosis naturally as she went through her own incredible battle against endometriosis. She is in, she's the author of Healing Endometriosis Naturally and the creator of the 12-week foundation program for healing endometriosis. She literally has hundreds to thousands of women flocking to her for help and attaining phenomenal results overall in their health. She has testimonials and praise literally raining like cats and dogs. She is, of course, Wendy Laidlaw. Wendy, it is honestly an honor to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be on your show. Yeah, absolutely. So, Wendy, before we kind of jump into your story, uh, can you kind of explain to listeners what endometriosis actually is? Well, that's a great question. Um, I think the simplest way to describe it, endometriosis is when the inside of a woman's uterus starts to migrate or migrates, finds itself outside the uterus in the abdominal cavity. And what that means is normally a woman has her monthly cycle where the inside of the uterus sheds and that blood is then released, you know, out out the woman's body. But what happens with endometriosis is those endometrial deposits that have found their way into the abdominal cavity have nowhere to go. So the blood, Mm. you know, swirls around that woman's abdomen, causing massive inflammation, adhesions, scar tissue, and all sorts of pain and inflammation that is very difficult to, to put into words and to describe. But it's an excruciating condition, which then tends to compound itself and lead into other conditions as well. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, what are like some of the warning signs and like kind of like symptoms that someone could start feeling, like a, a woman would start feeling? Again, another great question because on average, it, it takes about eight years for a woman to be diagnosed with the condition endometriosis. And sadly, at the moment, the only way to diagnose the condition officially is through surgical procedure, which I just think is ridiculous anyway. A woman whose body is highly inflamed and in hormone imbalance has to be operated on to have this uh, confirmed. And in a lot of cases, the surgeons aren't maybe experienced enough to A, to know what they're looking for or to even identify it. But what can be some early red flags? Now, obviously, as a medical disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. So, you know, I'm not saying this is a diagnosis, but women need to really feel into their own bodies and recognize, firstly, pain with a period is not normal. Now, through m- many, you know, generations, grannies, great grannies and mums have said, oh, well, that's just normal, dear, to have a pain with your menstrual cycle or even with ovulation. That's not normal. Yeah. You're supposed to have a light, pain-free three-day period. And, you know, when I say that to women, I know myself, my mine used to last 21 days. I'd be, you know, you know, crumpled up in pain, the hot water bottle wow. being my best friend, you know, and, and, and I think if... Red flags can be if you're finding that every month you're taking two to three days off your work and you're hugging that hot water bottle and you're dozed up with painkillers and you're in your bed and you're having to cancel engagements or dare I say even uh, intercourse is painful. It's not supposed to be painful. It's just because it's ever the whole area is inflamed and there's just so much going going on and going wrong in there. Mm. And then equally, if you're finding that you're going into accident and emergency every month and they're going, oh, I don't know what's wrong with you. All the bloods are clear. Then chances are, that may be what you have. But I think ultimately, if you have pain with your period, that's not normal. And what's great is if you can identify that there may be some similarities, and there's loads of information out there, and I discuss it in my book as well, then you can start taking steps to really start shifting and changing your body ahead of having to wait until it gets so bad that you have to get surgical procedures to have it diagnosed. Gotcha. Now, Wendy, my question is, because I'm obviously not a woman. So when you say pain, are you talking about the the cramps that are painful? Or is it like another sensation? Well, when I'm talking about endometriosis pain or even menstrual cramps, I mean, they, they tend to be of, a, of an intensity that I, I've tried in my book to try and describe them. But, you know, it's almost like appendicitis-like pain. I mean, it uh, takes gotcha. your breath away. It, it knocks you to the floor. It, it kind of like, it's like someone's punched you and, or stabbed you. You know, it, it is pain. And, and again, women tend to be very stoic and very kind of, you know, oh, I've got a high pain threshold and endure decades. I had 33 years of suffering oh. before, you know, that I was able to figure out why the what and then, you know, what, what to do to, to change all that. 
Gotcha. Now, are some women actually misdiagnosed a lot of the time, I'm sure, with maybe like, you know, like they might have appendicitis, you know, they might have torn like a ligament or something or some kind of musculoskeletal injury or like, you know, something else along the lines. Do you, do you find that sometimes they're misdiagnosed and they kind of go through these years of like, wow, like I really actually do have something wrong with me. Like no one's helping me. Have you found that to be? Oh, absolutely. And even that last statement, no one's helping me. You know, it's that sort of begging state that a lot of women get. I know myself, I ended up having my appendix removed because that's what they thought was wrong, but it was actually an ovarian cyst that was well, they referred to as a chocolate cyst, which was full of blood. So that blood that had escaped into the abdomen, you know, created it into a sort of a blood bubble and was causing all sorts of pain. And when that blood uh, bubble, the, the cyst burst, it was like sulfuric acid all over, you know, my insides. And I was double doses of morphine, 36 painkillers a day were doing nothing to dull the pain. So you're right, women can go. I had a lady email me yesterday and said that she'd had a, uh, she's not worked with me yet and she's going to be joining me next Monday, thank goodness, to join my program. But she said she was rushed into A&E last week. And um, she, uh, oh, the, the doctor came back and said they could find nothing wrong with her. And, um, mm. and she told them that she thought she had endometriosis. Any long story short, she said she overheard the doctor say to another doctor behind the curtain that perhaps she was making it up and that she'd put a tampon in. Wow. Or wow. So you can imagine the pain and the suffering. So, yes, yeah, some women get told by their doctors. And to be fair, some doctors, it's not their training needs to be re-looked at because right. they're just a byproduct of their training. A lot of the training, I spoke to some local um, trainee doctors where I live. There's a, an Edinburgh University, loads of young doctors come through. And in the summer in the park, I got chatting to these, lo- this, and these lovely people and I was saying, okay, so tell me, tell me about your training. What, what happens? And I knew because one of my daughter's friends had just gone through you know, to train as a doctor. And they get like two weeks training on gynecological issues, you know, to be Mm -hmm. a general sort of doctor. Unless, of course, they go specialize in it. So the first port of call for women is their local doctor. If they don't have a specialist knowledge or an understanding, then they'll just be prescribed painkillers or drugs or the pill or things like that. But I think the, the main issue with the medical profession in general is it tries to manage symptoms rather than trying to understand what the root causes are of the condition. And I know that you understand this with the work that you do. Um, And our culture and our conditioning is to try and manage the symptoms. So women can have countless symptoms, you know, back pain, dragging, pulling, you know, all sorts of different radiating pain that can kind of happen throughout the body. Um, And again, in the UK, I don't know what it's like with you guys, but the doctors only have seven minutes in which to see a patient. Wow. Seven minutes. So by the time they've taken their coat off and sat down, there's a minute and a half gone, you know, to explain everything. Um, so there's that sense of anxiety. And normally by the time a woman has gone to see a doctor, she's at her wit's end. Things have got really mm. bad, you right. know, and she's, you know, she's hemorrhaging and she's got massive clots and, and she's generally just, just getting by. And, and, and it breaks my heart. And that's why I wrote my book because I ended up, so so ill I was almost near organ failure Mm. that I never want anyone ever to to get to that stage you know and all all I thought I knew was that one medical pathway a medical machine Mm. but um as we'll discuss there is another way (laughs) (laughs) when did you actually find out that it was endometriosis have you known that it was endometriosis like the longest time like when did so like I'm sure that before like take us back so like when you first started having symptoms, <clears throat> what did you initially think it was? Obviously, I think you said, right, appendicitis and you got that removed. And then how long after that was it like, oh, it's endometriosis? And then how much longer did you go down the medical path? Well, I get, I don't know if I'm, I, I was going to say I'm one of the lucky ones, or I don't know, lucky or unlucky, but I, my mother had endometriosis. Um, and she had it really badly as well. But when I was 11 years old, I was like the only girl in class who was having to take time off school at ovulation and menstruation and kind of crawling along the ground and trying to do PE and, and physical education and, and things and try to kind of just get up. So my mother took me to see a gynecologist and, and it was the most horrific experience in your school uniform with a gynecologist, you know, doing what he does. Right. The most traumatizing thing. But 
I knew from a young age that's what it was. I didn't even really know how to pronounce it. And I didn't even really know what that meant. All I knew was that it was a condition that caused me excruciating amount of pain. I was kind of veered down the, oh, you go on the the, the, the pill and I didn't agree with my body and they tried various sort of drugs and things that didn't agree with my body. And I just kind of had got, so for 33 years, I kind of just put up with it. There was various times where it flared up and I ended up, as I was saying, one time was, I thought it was my appendicitis or appendix. And then there were chocolate cysts. So I got, as I got older, I learned I pretty much had to re-navigate uh, my life around my monthly cycles. I knew I couldn't plan anything. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do anything. I certainly couldn't wear white, that's for sure. <laughs> you, know, you know, and it just became that you're just trying to live your life and you're trying to manage this condition around your life. But it got to the point where this condition ended up managing my whole life to the point mm-hmm. I had none. So to answer your question, my mother had it, endometriosis. So she was quick enough to get me to, to see the gynecologist but I didn't actually short circuit anything and to be fair she ended up having to have a full hysterectomy when she was very young um, and it was devastating to her she felt very missold, very misled all her symptoms came back and more even though the uterus had been removed and her ovaries and she was she was never the same after that so in my own story I knew that that wasn't an option there was no magic surgery or no magic pill but um, it wasn't until I was in my 40s before I realized 33 oh, years later that something had to change. Oh, my gosh. That is just nuts. Man, that, that must have been rough all those years. I mean, what, what kind of things in that amount of time were you dealing with as far as like what were your like symptoms? And then what was the medical treatment that you were getting as you were going through those years? Well, all my symptoms were just... You know, the, had, you had the pre-menstrual tension where you just knew that things were, were getting bad. And, and you know, just before your, your uh, menstrual cycle, where you'd have that gnawing, like it's like a wire brush inside your, your you know, going up and down your legs and in, in, your, in your abdomen and the shooting pains and that would just take you away. So you'd be working with a client. I was in real estate before and before I retrained and everything. And, you know, I'd be out seeing a client and then, you know, I would be doing a presentation and then whack, you know, suddenly this mm-hmm. pain would come from nowhere and just take your breath away and you'd have to laugh it off and, and you know, just try and carry on. Jeez. And then there was the intense bleeding where, you know, I, I share this story and, and hope nobody's eating at the moment. But, um, you know, I, I went in to see a client and, and I had just flooded through in my car and I, thank goodness I was wearing black and I had, some protection but you know it I, you know and I had to went upstairs to the to the apartment of of the client because I was late and it was I couldn't go back and get changed it was just right. like oh it was a nightmare and then I walked in and their sofa was a white sofa and I'm like I can't oh. sit on that sofa I ended up sitting on the floor on my hunkers like on my heels doing my presentation on the floor you know so I had to adapt <laughs> my like my my job my everything you know I remember putting you know, my, um, my sisters at the time saying, we're going to have to go home afterwards. I'm just, you know, so there's so much pain and there's so much uh, suffering and, but you, but you just adapt, you know, as human beings right. tend to adapt to what's happening in our body without really stopping to pay attention. And then there was times where you would read the new fad, which was like, Oh, take soya beans and they're really good for you as women. And, and then uh, that was when I was hemorrhaging even more. I thought like wow. uh, going to the hospital saying like, how can somebody lose this much blood and still be alive? Huh. Uh, and, you know, so it was frightening. It was a frightening time because the general practitioners, the doctors don't understand it or they dismiss it as you being either a hysterical woman or just take some painkillers and be done with it. Um, and then, of course, when you go to see the gynecologist, their training is in surgery. So they want to operate. And, you know, so... It got it got to the point where I ended up in. In fact, it's going to be uh, what day? Were you? It's going to be seven years almost to the to the to the the year where to the month where I, I got rushed into accident and emergency, and then that's kind of when I had operation number five and operation wow. number six, and then ended up bedridden for three years after that. Oh man, dang, that is just brutal. Well, Wendy, in your experience. And through other people's experiences, what exactly, I mean, I'm sure there's multiple different 
you know, factors, but what actually causes endometriosis? Is there a genetic factor to it as well? Again, another great question. I think there is a lot of um, discussion as to what causes it. Um, but I think, you know, with epigenetics and all sorts of different things, right. it can be lots of different elements. Like, so, so why is it like my mom came from a family of, of seven children, four of which were girls, but she was the only one that had endometriosis. Mm. So you could argue, is it a genetic thing? Or was there elements of her environment that turned on different parts of her DNA to, for her to cause it? Nobody knows exactly for sure, but I think I don't tend to kind of think about that so much of myself when working with women. It's not so much kind of what's caused it. It's if you have it, it's kind of like, what, what can you do yourself to, to put the condition into remission? Because you, you asked at the beginning, what is endometriosis? It's basically uh, inflammation and hormone imbalance. So even if the endometrium has gone into the abdomen, normally your immune system would mop that up and clean it up and take it away into the blood supply and remove it from the body. So even if you did get it, your immune system and everything should be functioning effectively enough. I mean, you know this, like most yeah. of all diseases are a result of inflammation in the body. Right, so right. If people do have, you know, that kind of pain, and it can show up in different ways with different people, can't it? So maybe for that particular type of woman, it's shown up as endometriosis. It may show up as other things. But we all know that disharmony in the body you know, tends to result in, you know, illness and, and things. So it's looking at rebalancing the body. So if if you are having pain, then it's just being stopping and paying attention to what's coming in on and around the body. Gotcha. And I know that you're really big on foods and implementing certain things. What kind of foods typically do you start using with your women and things that you kind of like take away uh, to help with endometriosis? Sure. Well, I, I talk about the five P's, the five poisons. You know, there's the produce, which is the food, and then there's the products, which is your personal and household, and then there's the property and your environment, and then there's people, and then there's the past. So there's a number of different layers you need to kind of look at when you're looking at a woman with endometriosis. Food, obviously, that has to be our first go-to. And, and, you know, in our day and age, it's so easy to eat badly. You know, there's just yeah. so much rubbish food out there. And I know on my own journey, I had to re-educate myself, not only about the body, but, you know, just trying to be more mindful. Everyone's so super busy, so they tend not to put much thought into what's coming into their body, what they're eating. So they just grab the thing that's on the shelf or in the, in the wrapper and they just shove it in their mouth on the go and then they wonder why their body's like. So one of the, one of the early things that I do with women who, who reach out to work with me, and invariably by the time they reach out to work with me, they're, they're in a poor state. You know, they're, they're, you know, and if they're in a lot of pain, they don't feel like eating. You know, we all know we need to eat healthily. So I almost take it back a step from there to kind of getting them to drink their food to start with so that their body, because their digestive system's invariably impaired right. and inflamed and, you know, with tears or whatever, you know, with the, the painkillers and the drugs and surgery. So, and it's all very well eating great food, but if we can't digest it, we can't absorb it, you know. So we almost take it back a step just to allow the body to heal, you know, the intestinal tract to heal and them to get. So I, I refer to them as power shakes where I have them have these power shakes, which I love when women come on my program because within like four to five weeks, they're like, I love my power shakes. And I'm like, yeah, you love it because your body is not having to work so hard to break everything down. It's just sopping it in and sopping it up and, and just starting. Now, obviously there's main kind of known inflammatories like wheat and gluten, soy and dairy. I don't like to talk too much about like what not to eat because that makes people want to cry. They're like, well, what else do I eat? You know? So I focus on what we can eat. And actually there's an abundance of brilliant, beautiful foods out there and try and present it in a way that makes it easy and fun and simple. And as I say, like drinking your food, especially early on, if you're really struggling to think because you're in pain, you know, if, if women are in pain, you can't even get out to the shops or even if you get stuff delivered, you can't stand to cook, you know? So right. it's, it's kind of meeting people where they're at, but mm -hmm. opening up the world of wonderful food that's out there to nourish your body and heal your body. But I think the main one is probably wheat. Wheat is a known inflammatory food. And even I've had women write to me having read my book and said, I just cut out wheat and I've had no pain periods now wow. for like three months, you know? So everyone's slightly different, you know, so I put that as a caution but wheat can be a huge 
uh, a huge thing if they take out of their, their diet. And I say swap it out. Because psychologically, if we're feeling we're being deprived of something, we want it more. <laughs> so if yeah. you can swap it out with, there are brilliant gluten-free alternatives now, gluten-free, wheat-free alternatives, or make your own and have a bit of fun with food. I've got my own cookbook and things about just to try and make nice. it as simple and as easy for, for people to kind of, because clearly if your body's in pain, there's going to be some changes need to be made. Right. Now, to the degree of changes, it's amazing, and you know this yourself, how quickly the body can rebalance and reset. Um, and as I say, wheat is probably one of the, the early ones, I'd say, look, depending. If you're having painful periods, just swap out wheat with wheat-free or you know, gluten with gluten-free and try that for three months and take a note of what's happening in your body and see if that makes a difference. That's super cool. Yeah. Now, we were talking earlier about um, one of my other uh, doctor friends, his girlfriend, um, as soon as she stopped taking or eating gluten or gluten products, like she just started feeling so much better. And it's just, it's like just fascinating. You know, some people, they just can't have it. But, you know, I, I totally agree with you, Wendy, because if you take too much away from someone, they're almost going to like kind of want to rebel yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. going to make stuff so much harder. But like, Wendy, you do such a good job because like you were saying, like, I wanted to make, I want to make this transition as easy as possible. So what can I create for everyone, whether that's a cookbook or your book for them so that everything comes together full circle and it's not like, you know, pulling teeth out, you know? And that's why I think Wendy, that you get such great results is because the compliance is awesome because they're not having to like do the hardest thing in their life. <laughs> right. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I mean obviously you've heard that phrase. Yeah you've heard that phrase that we all fear change and seek change in equal measure. So it's kind of like, you know, appealing to all parts. Like if we're in pain, we know deep down we need to make change. But then if I'm saying like, don't eat this and don't eat that, you kind of go, Oh, I want to go and cry. What do I eat? And I know, I know when I started my journey, I'm like, I just got to the point where I'm like, well, I don't know what to eat. So I, I barely ate anything and my body needed fed. It needed nourished. It needed vitamins and minerals, amino acids, the building blocks, the macro greens. It needed all these yeah. things. And of course, I did all the guinea pigging. I did all the try and tested. I, I shipped stuff in from all over the world. You know, I live in Scotland, but I shipped stuff in from America, New Zealand, Australia, Canada. I tried and tested everything because what is very uh, common with women with endometriosis is they have super sensitive bodies, which mm. they probably hate to start with because their, their bodies are giving them a lot of pain. But what I teach them and what I help them discover is just how amazing their bodies are mm. along the journey. When, when they start to like learn and be educated about how amazing their bodies are, they end up loving their bodies. And then they're, in fact, somebody, emailed, one of my students emailed me yesterday and said, so annoying, Wendy, I want to eat rubbish, but my body just doesn't <laughs> like it anymore. <laughs> Yeah. And that's when I'm like, yay, because they recognize how good, because they've never felt good before. Or if they have, it's right. been a long, long right. time since they've felt good. So when you are making changes, it's doing it in a way that are bite-sized pieces and just noticing like how the body responds so well to that. Right. And I'm sure, Wendy, when you're working with your women, you see a lot of hidden health benefits come out. So like their sleep better, their happiness is like through the roof, their energy is better, their skin's incredible. Like all these other things that people don't think about, I'm sure that like they're pretty awesome with the results you're getting. So like, can you kind of speak to that? Like what, what kind of things do you see outside of, you know, healing endometriosis? Oh, well, I'm so glad you brought that up because yes, I mean, endometriosis is, tends to be when women have either self-diagnosed or had a diagnosis and they come to me and I get everyone to complete like an opening questionnaire and then kind of, you know, questionnaires as we're going through and then a closing questionnaire. And yep, it's, I've had women who've lost 20 pounds, but they're eating awesome. two times as much, you know, their yeah. eczema has disappeared, their candida has gone, their adenomyosis is gone, their cysts have gone, they're, they have regular bowel movements because we check bowel movements every day, mm, yeah. you know, it's like, this whole like their nails are thicker, their hair is stronger, their eyesight's improved, you know, their energy's gone through the roof. Um, and suddenly they're, and we look at the emotional uh, element too, because it, it's hard for, for a woman to be suffering for decades. You know, I, I interviewed, I've got another couple of testimonials about to come out and I interviewed the women recently and, and it just dawned on me again, like we're not talking like having you know, a toe pain or you're banging your knee or, or backache, you know, for maybe a couple of weeks, even a couple of months. These are women who've suffered for decades, like since they were 14 or 11 or, or 18, every ovulation, every menstruation, so we're talking like every two weeks. 
And suddenly they've got release and relief. But not only that, they have the understanding of what their bodies like and, and what their bodies don't like. You know, they've suddenly got this power back. Suddenly they, they really kind of are embracing their whole bodies in a whole new way. And suddenly not only is their endometriosis pain reduced and then disappeared, but like other elements of their bodies have healed as well. And what's another wee bonus is I've helped women with fertility. I've had five nice. babies through the program wow. and, and even their, their family members get involved as well, you know, and their, their uh-huh. husbands and their partners and their children. So, and I try and do it so that it's a lifestyle thing. It's not a, right. it's not a diet. I dislike that word intensely mm-hmm. because of the connotation surrounding it. It's developing healthy eating habits and, the food is one element, as I talked about earlier, yeah. but if you can incorporate it psychologically into your life, it becomes fun and it becomes, right. you, you then reap the rewards, like you feel good, your body feels right. great, you know, and then it's just like, it's a no brainer. You're just like, why would, okay, sometimes people will have the, 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 the rubbish thing, but then they notice how rubbish they feel. And right. I'm like, right. yay, like, I don't <laughs> care that you had it, as long as you keep it like 90, 10. But if you've noticed how bad you felt, then I've done my job because you have a relationship with your body now that's going to stay with you for life because you're not going to ever want to go back to that pain and suffering that you had before. You're going to want to feel good and make plans and and follow through in these things. Yeah, it's like that enlightenment, right? Like, (laughs) it's so funny because you light up when they like, like you finally have like your woman realize, yes, they're feeling like crap, but (laughs) but it's like a good thing because then it's like, oh, wow. I learned something. I shouldn't eat this anymore, you know? So. Yeah. Well, well, I don't shame them either because, again, there's, there's different people do things differently. And, you know, and I, for me, it was but the long-term gain. If you say don't do this and don't do that and then you shame people, like, you know, that's not going to make them feel motivated to keep going. Right. But if you're like, look, the key thing is, is you've identified, you've made the connection between your body feeling rubbish and what you had then that's amazing. Just, and they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, because you know how great you feel eating this other food, good food, good fresh food. But equally, you've noticed that your body feels bad when you're eating that rubbish. Because, like, you know, we all do it every now and again, and we all like, why did I have that? I feel disgusting afterwards, yeah. <laughs> you know? But every now and again, we get seduced by these amazing marketing people out there with their packaging and their messages and whatever, and you know? But as long as they're in tune with their body, uh, then, then they have the power and the control, you know, to, right. to reduce and eliminate the pain and suffering. Gotcha. Now, I, I, I noticed you said something there earlier, and it like it really just resonated with me because myself as a practitioner in the office, uh, we see that compliance gets better when a spouse or somebody else in the family is also going through care. So yes. I think that it's absolutely paramount that when your women go through it, that their husband and their children also partake kind of in the lifestyle and the eating because then they have accountability. You know, somebody's like holding them accountable for staying true to that lifestyle because honestly, like community and and having someone else there to help you is like one of the biggest reasons why people are successful. And so I think that's huge that you're doing that also with your women. Yeah. And I think for them, they felt so isolated and alone and misunderstood in their pain and their suffering. And I encourage them very early on. I give them top tips on how to communicate with their family and their, their work colleagues and things like that to try and explain in, in a language that's, you know, understandable for people who don't have it, who don't understand it and ask them to support them in, in whatever way that they can. But also to sit down with their families and I've got even my own operations. I got the surgeon to take a video of my last surgery because I needed to know what was going on inside. So nice. it's not a pleasant viewing. I admit <laughs> when I get them to sit down and to watch what what's going, I mean, I was such a mess inside. And if the women have had multiple surgeries, get their husband, get their children to sit down and watch this thing, you know, and then they have a greater empathy and understanding and compassion from their family as they start this journey and then as they're incorporating all these things, I think they feel like I'm being selfish not to share with my family because I'm starting to feel really good and the family is starting to become a bit curious. They get on board. And I've had one lady who said her husband had gone away. He was a bit, you know, a bit sniffy about what she was doing to start with. And then he got on board and then he then he was following the same protocols, the legal protocols that I call them. And then he went away for a work weekend. 
And he came back in a really bad mood and she's saying, what's wrong? And he's like, they didn't have gluten-free or wheat-free stuff and oh, all the stuff was yeah. processed. And I didn't have, I didn't have no fresh food and it wasn't hormone-free and grass-fed. And I was just wow. like, yes, you know, wow. because he understood like the importance of how he was feeling before in his body and how like poor he felt when he came back. So that was great. Yeah. That's super cool. Wow. That's, that's, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> awesome. So yeah, and actually that leads me to my next question. Um, what would you say is the hardest part with these women transitioning into your, your protocol? Because, you know, most people, just like the husband you were saying, they're kind of like, you know, uh, I don't know about this. I don't know. This might be a, another failed attempt or something, whatever. And like, do you find that it's sometimes it's hard for these women to kind of like warm up to you? And then when they do, what's the hardest part when they're transitioning? Like what's, what is it that you're, you're teaching them or coaching them into like saying, Hey, listen, you got to adopt this. I'm like, just, you know, you're grabbing them by the hand. Come on, come on. I got you. I got you. Like what, what are the hardest things do you see? <clears throat> well, I think by the time women reach out, they're really scared. You know, they, they've recognized that the painkiller drugs and surgery route does not help them. And they're really okay. scared. I know I was there. I'm like, holy moly, this is the only route being opened up to me and I'm getting worse. You know, that, that's scary because if that seems the only route, you're like, like, well, what else is there? There has to be another way. And then that's invariably when they're looking online and they're going, there has to be another way and they come across my boot. Mm. So when they first reach out, they're scared. <clears throat> so I, I try to create an environment. I try to give as much information as possible. I offer a 14-day money-back guarantee. You know, I even offer a money-back guarantee on my boot because I don't want there to be any obstacles where they're like, oh, what happens if I spend this money? It doesn't work. I think once they've made that commitment to themselves, and one lady had said, it's almost like going rogue. I felt really, <sighs> really guilty, like not going to see my doctor. But I also encourage them to include their doctor. And I right. say this because... I don't want them to feel they're, you know, having to sever any ties because women with endometriosis need as much and as many support as they can get, you know, because invariably they're feeling very isolated and alone. If they've got a good doctor that really cares about them, they're going to have a doctor who's going to say, like, whatever you decide to do, I'm going to support you because my methods haven't worked for you. I'm going to support you. I might be curious. I might be a bit skeptical, but hey, I'm here for you. Do you know what I mean? That's right, right. my view. So. Obviously, there is some doctors that my clients have oh, yeah. gone to. Oh, yeah. thrown my book on the floor and said, <laughs> it's ridiculous. But actually, the women know I care. They know that um, it's a journey. It, it, it's, it's coming onto a new path, I like to call it, on a journey for really helping them to discover the root causes of, because their body should, is always wanting to rebalance, always wanting to heal itself. That's the premise. That's where I start from. So if it's not healing, then we have to do a paradigm shift and say, well, what's stopping it from healing? So I use the analogy of the onion, you know, coming down to the layers of the onion, getting to the core through the five Ps as to what is stopping their body from healing. Why is it still inflamed? Why is it in pain? So it, it's, it's a multimodal approach is my approach. So you know, I meet them where they're at and I, I do it very slowly and very safely and very carefully because again, there's nothing worse than being overwhelmed with information right, when you're like right. struggling to get through the day. So I drip feed my information each week. I give women wins. I give them support. You know, they, they feel my presence, but, you know, individually as a group, the information, my membership site is packed. I was just like, <laughs> overgiving because not in, a, not in an overwhelmed way, but I'm like, this is where I was. This is what helped me. If you just put your feet in the steps, you know, where I was mm. and, you know, just provide that environment. So they start off scared right. and then they start to see, and I use the analogy like a little seed, you know, you put a seed into beautiful, nutritious soil that's nutritious, dense, it's got water and it's got sunlight. It's going to start to grow some roots. Mm. And then those roots, you know, are going to get bigger and then they're going to have some shoots. And then when you said, well, so what are the other benefits? Well, they start to see their nails coming in thicker and they mm -hmm. have an ovulation and it's, oh, there's no pain there. And then, oh, their periods are a bit lighter this month. And is that, oh, is that, is that real? Did I just imagine that? So that the shoots start to kind of come up and that's when they start to ultimately have faith in their own body and biology because, you know, what you and I do is working with people's bodies 
you know, and teaching them and showing them how to get the best from their bodies. So it's not some woo-woo science or some far off reaching thing. It's, right. you know, it's biology. So that's where the shift happens, that they didn't realize that they had the power to influence their own biology. Right. Well, that's awesome. And it's crazy to think that most people now, they think that eating foods for health is like archaic or something. We've been (laughs) eating foods from the earth for as long as we've lived here. But now we think that medication is the answer. It's honestly the craziest thing to me. But hey, you know, I mean, that's the way we've been designed to live now. So, so Wendy, what other things are you doing other than like nutritional stuff and cleaning up the diet? Are you doing like mindset and breathing or like meditation stuff or anything outside of the nutrition realm? Are you doing anything in particular? Yeah, absolutely. As I say, going through the five P's, you know, we, we look at the products that are coming in on and around the body, the xenoestrogens, we're looking at phytoestrogens, we're looking at what's in the environment. And most importantly, as I mentioned, the emotional health, because invariably there can be a lot of trauma, small T, large T trauma that, you know, has happened to a woman through either the surgical procedures or the drugs or even just the treatment. So it's all about... Um, I, I encourage my women to journal every morning as part of their three um, three protocols in the morning, and they have to do 15 minutes of meditation a day. They struggle with that, obviously, <laughs> because everyone does to start with. I think it's more the word. I know when I first heard the word meditation, I thought you had to sit on top of a hill and kind of elevate, you know, a couple right. of inches off the ground and stuff. <laughs> and and you know, I didn't realize that because I then was caught up in all this better, faster, more now kind of mentality so the idea of even sitting still for five minutes used to freak me out until my body went on strike and then like forced me to re-examine so yeah it's all about it's the whole body whole person approach it's not just the uterus it's not just the abdomen it's the whole woman and I'm really helping the woman probably discover herself for the first time recognize her voice who she is what she thinks what she feels and really connecting herself with the body. And these things are done through, you know, century renowned practices of journaling, meditation, mindfulness. And it's not like heavily done, so not to scare anyone off who's listening to this, but it is incorporated as daily practices. And it's amazing. We go and charge up our iPhones, you know, when the battery's like depleting, but we don't think to charge up our own batteries, you know, in the middle of the day or whenever we just keep going. And that's how I view my meditations. I do 30 minutes in the middle of the day, every day, you know, and I view it as going to charge up my battery. And it's amazing the insight, the guidance, the direction, you know, and and the rejuvenation that you can feel. But it takes time. When people are first coming to me, they're in high levels of pain. They struggle with that. And that's okay. You know, they're, they're allowed to struggle because that's, this is new, you know, and then once they just stick with it, like with anything new, it's awkward, it's uncomfortable to start with. They just keep working with that. And then before they know it, they're like, oh, I love it. And I'm like, awesome, because they recognize the benefit. Cool. Now, what kind of meditation is it? Is it? Do you have them like kind of like start with like guided stuff or like do you teach them how to meditate? Like what, what are you using? Um, again, I try, I've got a couple of suggestions on the membership site because I think, again, it's a very personal right. uh, tape. Some, some people love classical <laughs> music. Some people just want uh, beats and some people want nature sounds. So I put a selection on there and say, see what you're drawn to. I personally like guided meditation because I've got like one of these blue bottle minds, and bzz, 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 you know, I'm going to kind of, yeah, I got to keep it really trained and focused. I like the ones that, you know, you know, bring you back down into your body. And as we know, meditation is all about coming, coming out of our head and our thoughts into, into our body. So again, I'm, I'm very cautious. Uh, I don't want to dictate too much, but I will encourage people to try all the different routes and see what works. And then what might work at the beginning might not work in the middle or end because they're going through this transition period of, you know, of growth, you know, within themselves, feeling into themselves. Um, and I encourage them to expand into different things. But personally, I like guided meditation that works best for me, but whatever really works best for them. Gotcha. Now, Wendy, I might've asked you this earlier, but where, when, how did you find out that a lot of it was coming from like the foods you were eating and when did you like start implementing it? And when you did implement it, how long did it kind of start to take your body to start, you know, accepting that? Well, I kind of 
I've got, I've got quite an analytical mind. So when I was bedridden and, and, and um, I don't know if I mentioned about the mitochondria score, I got this test done, you know, oh, mitochondria no. yeah, and they're yeah. like little battery packs in your cells. Yeah. So I managed to find this amazing woman who was able to do a blood test, which measured my mitochondria score. So a healthy human should have a mitochondria score of 300. Your yeah. organs need a mitochondria score of roughly about 70 to all to be functioning effectively. But my mitochondria score was at 15. So I was like almost on my way out. I knew that, you know, think my, I felt like my body closing down. So then when I cut my finger, which I think I mentioned earlier, you know, I cut my finger, I noticed it was starting to heal. I think, well, why is my insides not healing? So I knew that, okay, so if the body's always wanting to heal itself, i.e. cut finger, scabbing over, mm-hmm. well, what's stopping it? So it had to be a, a byproduct of my environment, what was coming in the body, going on the body or around the body that was stopping that healing process. So I knew obviously I had to start looking at food, but then I could barely eat. My digestive system was so shut down and was so impaired and so damaged. So that's when the power shakes came into play. So from there, the power shakes, and then I started to get stronger, have more energy. The inflammation was starting to reduce and eliminate. Um, And I learned about the wheat. I knew, I noticed that when I had wheat, I was in pain. And when I didn't have it, I wasn't in pain. I noticed how, you know, my body just loved, obviously, the the, the raw foods and the vegetables and, you know, the, the fresh food. Um, and my body really started to, to kind of, you know, respond to that, really. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. So here's the other thing. I know a lot of people, when they're stricken with, like, any kind of disease or condition, now they kind of, like, go straight into, like, just a plant-based diet or they may even be vegan what did your take? Because I, I personally, I eat meat, right? I don't eat like a ton of it. But what is your ideal like meat to plant ratio if you were to have a plate and like, do you limit the amount of meat that they're eating? Like what kind of, what does a plate look like or like on a daily basis? And um, have you found that like limiting meat kind of helps with endometriosis? Great question. Um, I mean, again, I try to be philosophical about this and, and kind of our great, great ancestors, cavemen, cavewomen, you know, right. they ate meat, but obviously it was grass fed, uh-huh. hormone free and, and, you know, it was good quality meat. They ate fruit and berries and nuts and, and all sorts of different things. I, I try to say to my women, that's, we're trying to get us back as close to that as we possibly can. I don't have any issue with meat as long as it's grass-fed, hormone-free. and, and um, you know, I love that. Yeah, I have no issue. That's why we have these teeth. That's why we have these the little fangs right. for to tear meat right. apart. I just, you want the freshest, the best quality that you can get. You know, same with fish. You want, you know, um, Atl- a Pacific caught fish. You know, you want deep, uh, deep sea right. fish and, and you want free range organic chickens you know yeah. so you're wanting the best and you really want to support your farmers markets and things but you go there you get the best quality food and you you get to understand even where it's come from you know it's not like buying you know your food that's you know been packaged in chile and then sent to china and then come back across the sea again <laughs> And sprayed with all goodness knows what, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. And and once you start like opening your mind and educating yourself about these things, it's it's mind blowing. You go, how could I put this much muck in my body all these years and still be alive? Is it any wonder my body's been in pain? So I'm, I like to be kind of like I say to my women, you know, when they're deciding like what to eat for supper or dinner, and as they've got my cookbook, you know, it's kind of like keep it simple. The kiss prim- principle: keep it super right. simple. Keep it super simple. You know, I was interviewing um, a chef the other day for my podcast because I thought it would be great to have someone on. And he's of the same philosophy. You know, you can get a beautiful free range organic chicken breast, you know, and just some some onions and some carrots and, you know, coconut oil and salt and pepper and some garlic, you know, and bingo, you've got a beautiful, fresh, healthy meal. Um, so I, I know some people are very, oh, because there's this endo, endo diet and things and they're very anti-meat. Well, you know, you get important amino acids from meat, like L-carnitine and things. You know, we and need. There's a meat. reason why these plant-based people they have to take B vitamins. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, what I do have to say though is that maybe what tends to put people off certain meats and things is because their digestive system is impaired. You know, and that's maybe why they're maybe going towards these things or maybe just under the influence of these plant-based diets. I, I just feel as a human being, you know, as we've evolved over like millions of years that was what our diet used to be 
And I think we should be trying to eat as healthy, as cleanly as possible. But bear in mind, if you've had lots of painkillers and drugs and surgery, you know, when the body's in a fight flight state, your digestive system shuts down and, and is more impaired. So it ne- may need some more support when eating solid proteins because it needs to be chewed more. Most people don't chew enough anyway. Nope, they do not. They do not I chew enough. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we should be I chewing see. until it's like almost a liquid form before we swallow. But how many people do chew, chew, swallow, and then get indigestion, Nobody. stomach ache? They, or they, they know they do. Yeah. But I, was, I thought you were going to say, how many people chew? Like, no. Nope. <laughs> exactly. We forget there's no teeth in our stomach, you know? Right. So. Exactly. So I, I, I think, I mean, everyone to their own. I, I, somebody had been awfully upset with me that I said that in my book and, you know, but I'm like everybody to their own, they're entitled to their own opinion is what everybody works for everybody. But in my opinion, where we originated from our great, great ancestors ate meat and it was fresh and it was good. And, and why should we change that? We have, our, we have bodily requirements, you know, nutritious requirements from, from meat and chicken and fish and things anyway. Yeah. No, I, uh, I am like a hundred percent on board with you. And here's the thing, Wendy, I've had, I've had about three or four, um, plant-based people on the show and they have like really good material, but, uh, you know, a lot of the times uh, I think sometimes people get wrapped up on, on diets and yeah. they kind of think it's the only way when it, it should be a balance. Like I life agree. is about balance, right? Yeah. And so the other problem I see is that I think when these, when these plant-based people, they talk about meat being like the devil, uh-huh. they're talking about the meats that are like from slaughterhouses. Like, Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And like, yeah. they're not really talking about the grass fed pasture raised meats. They're, they're like the meats that come from these factories are the worst meats. Like we oh, all know awesome. that. And like they've they're been rancid. Like, you just need to look at the meat. You can see and they say, isn't it because of the cortisol that's released into the animal meat before yeah. they're slaughtered? I mean, you can see, if you have them side by side, you can see the difference in the meat. And you're right. It, and they're, they're basing that. And that's, that's, an, that's unfair because actually you get good quality meat, you know, you know, that they're killed humanely and, you know, right. and it's beautiful meat. That's how we've, we've right. all evolved. No, uh, like a hundred percent. Cause we out in Wyoming, I'm here out in Wyoming and we, I hunt like when we kill our animal and then we eat it and it's like the yeah. freshest meat ever. <laughs> so that's super cool to see where exactly the animal comes from. Yes. And like, you know, it's, it's hunt and then to the plate that night, you know, like you eat, you're eating it that night, which is really quite cool actually. Um, but I totally agree. I mean, I think like a lot of these documentaries, Wendy, are just like absolutely ridiculous. They're they're like catering to the vegans and plant based people of the world. They have like their own agenda, and the, like they're not taking account of the actual science of what's going on. Absolutely, <laughs> they're just making propaganda. Yeah. So absolutely, and I, I, that's just it. Just doesn't make sense to me, you know. But <laughs> I, so I'm with you. <laughs> so so Wendy, what is your typical? morning look like what do you do like what are your rituals well my typical morning is i um i journal every morning upon awakening um yeah. i do three pages every morning no matter what and uh, some people again when they're on my program they, they, they really struggle with the journaling because like, oh, i'll do it at night no no there's a whole different person wakes up mm-hmm. in the morning then they're it goes to bed at night so i journal every morning i have my power shake i'll have bacon and eggs i mean i have like i eat lots you know nice. um and you know, I feel so lucky, you know, because I love yeah. food. I, I, <clears throat> in fact, I was on a on a plane uh, recently, and um, they'd forgotten my food. <clears throat> Excuse me. And anyway, they end up getting me some food from first class, and they're like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. We only got salad, and we only got salmon." And I'm like, "That's my idea of a dream <laughs> meal, you know." <laughs> oh, we <laughs> only of- have these healthy foods. Sorry. I know. <laughs> As I looked at the person next to me who had this tin foiled like shriveled bit of chicken that looked like to be fried within a, an inch of its life and was like like oh. cardboard you know and I hate to think what was in there and I'm like loving so I just you know I like seeds and nuts dried fruits um you know people said you have chocolate yes but I have the best quality chocolate you know I don't have any of your your rubbish stuff and right. Like you said, everything in moderation. I will have the odd glass of wine. I know to take milk thistle to help my liver, you know, if I have the odd glass yeah. of wine. But I think, you know, for me, it's all about um, 
being really mindful and then after lunch I you know because I work from home I um I always like I'll take my dog out for a walk mm-hmm. and get out into nature because I love being amongst the greenery and and I feel like really like our bodies don't get enough we're cooped up in homes with electricity and wi-fi and things it's getting out into nature and then I'll do a meditation for 30 minutes every day um I mean I'm not a gym type person but I do love walking and uh, yoga and things like that so it's 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 been tough for me to come into my body in this way because I've, and, you know, and I have to be really mindful of putting myself first so that I can serve other people now. That's fantastic. That sounds like an awesome day to me every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Wendy, you have the the twelve week foundation program, right? Um, what's the kind of what's kind of like the bird's eye view of this? Like, like you're taking someone in and you're doing this and that. Like what? Can you kind of give like kind of like a synopsis of what like people can expect through that? I think, as I say, I, I, the 12 Week Foundation program is for women are really ready and committed to really uh, get support and help to figure out what is causing, what is the root cause of their, their pain and symptoms. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, if they're, if they're ready to take that leap, I will guide them, walk alongside them. Um, there's like, uh, educational um, pre-recorded videos in there there's podcasts there's videos there's handouts there's downloads there's like I give everything because mm-hmm. and it's drip fed each week so you can really implement the changes that need to be made we're really looking to swap out wheat that's very important we're going to be looking at sugar because a lot of people are sugar addicts these days yeah, and again I say that very tentatively but don't worry I talk about artificial sugars and I talk about natural sugars you know again we're going for long term health and things so but everything's kind of done in a way that I'm working with you not against you I'm leading you down a well worn tried and tested path now which is amazing at the same time we're really taking care of your emotional health as well getting you to learn to teach you how to tune into yourself and um, how to put boundaries in place with people that are maybe toxic and you know there's some really bad people out there and they may be they may be making you ill you know uh, you know how to put boundaries in place you know things like that so uh, all the while just um, helping you feel empowered and educated because once you know you know then you start to build up that confidence, then your body starts to respond, and then you know you can really start making plans. I had a lady who's about to come to the end of the advanced program because some it depends on how long someone's had endometriosis. If they've maybe had it five years or less, the twelve weeks is fine for the foundation. But if they've had it five plus years, then there's the advanced program as well. Because again, we're looking much deeper, um, you know, in, into the into the mind body connection and things like that. You know, if there's been any trauma and abuse and and things that are playing out as well as all the other environmental elements. And she she's going to be doing uh, an interview with me in the next week or so. And I'm so excited for that to come out because she said to me just last week, you saw me at my most vulnerable and my most scared I've ever been in my life. And you had faith in me and I feel a bit emotional. And she said, you never gave up on me because when women come into this program, like I'm there with them. There's no way, you know, not, not, not any bullying or anything like that, but I'm like there. I know no one's ever come to me as bad as I've been. So I take them by the hand and I lead them gently and safely, you know, continuously down this path and help them to, to figure out themselves because it's not like I do the work for them, but I'm there alongside them while they learn what they need to learn to do the work for themselves. They feel supported in that journey. Gosh. That's super awesome, Wendy. I mean, you're just like doing like really, really good work. And I'm, I'm honestly honored to have you on here. <laughs> it's really cool. So, okay, Wendy, as we're coming towards the end of the show, you know, I have three questions, right? You don't know what I'm going to ask. I don't know what I'm going <laughs> to <But>, ask. <laughs> so, okay. If the world was ending today and you could eat anything for your last meal, what would it be? Oh, my goodness. I'd have a power shake. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> what goes into that shake? Oh, so many beautiful things. My my amino acids, my multivitamin mineral powder, microgreens, and then I would juice your cucumber, celery, carrots, apple. I mean, it just wow. like it's when I say power shake, this is power shake. You know, I go out with a bang. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. That sounds really good. I got to go make a shake now. <laughs> okay. So second question, Wendy, if you had one last week to live, and you are in perfect health, you could travel anywhere in the world, where would it be? 
Do you know, I, I live in Europe, but I've rarely traveled around Europe. I think I'd want to travel around Europe, like Prague, Budapest, you know, Italy, uh, Sicily. There's some beautiful architecture and some history down in those parts of the world I'd love to go and see. That's totally cool. Yeah, I've actually never been over there at all. I've actually barely even been outside of the country. So <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're making it further than me because you've been over here in the States. So yeah, that's nice. Okay, so Wendy, if you had one piece of advice for anyone out there listening to live a better life, what would it be? Trust your instincts. Mm. Your instincts. I think uh, growing up, we, we depending on our family of origin and the condition that we've had, we're we're told to be a certain way and, and conform and and be conditioned. But actually, I think what everybody seeks in their life is you know are these answers to life. And to themselves, and actually, all the answers that they have are within themselves. If they learn to trust their instincts through daily practices like the journaling, meditation, prayer, going back into nature, um, just listen to your instincts because they—that's all that we really have. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we, yeah. we have as, well, as many brain cells in our intestinal tract as we do as a cat has in its head. But yes. how often do we yes. listen to our gut or trust our instincts? So that would be my thing that so for anyone in whatever stage of health they're at, you might go and see a professional in a white coat. They're a stranger in a white coat. Always come back to yourself. Oh, never doubt yourself. Always trust your instincts and take your time to listen to those instincts. That's huge. And not many people say that, but you're totally right when it comes to that. Because, you know, they always say that gut feeling. It's like, yeah. listen to yourself. There's a reason why you get those butterflies in your stomach, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, that's super cool. Well, Wendy, honestly, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And I'm so glad we were able to do this. Now, Wendy, where is a place that anyone can go to find out more about you or anything that you're providing for anybody? Where can they connect with you? I'll give you a special link. So if your listeners want to click on the link uh, under the show notes, they can go and get a free paperback book um, worth $14.99 or $19.99 on Amazon. Um, and I ship all over the world. I just ask people to pay $7.95. But if they go to healendometriosisnaturallybook.com, which will, as I say, that's, that'll be the link that I, I give you in the show notes, then they can get this free paperback copy. I, I even offer a money back guarantee because this information feels so important to me for women to have so that they know that there are options, that there is another way. And then they can read that they, and the reason I do the book in the way that, you know, the first bit's about my story and then the next bit is about like step by step of where to start. So they know that, that like they know I know where they're at. So that's where they can go and get more information. Um, and obviously, I'm on Facebook group as well. It's Heal and Metosis Naturally Official Book Group. But um, I would suggest that would be the first place for people to start just to get a feel whether they, and even if they haven't been diagnosed with a condition, again, I lay everything out so they can maybe just feel into themselves to see whether or not they, that resonates with them. Awesome. Well, Wendy, thanks so much for being on. And honestly, I look forward to doing more relationship and talking with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been great, great sure. chatting to you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.